Hi guys, uh, this video is the first video I've uploaded in a long time and I really wanted to say thank you for your patience uh, and staying subscribed to a channel that really isn't active at the minute. Um, I'm still doing a few live streams but I haven't uploaded anything in a while so I wanted to say thank you for your patience with a tutorial. Uh, so what I'll be teaching today is Reset by Paul Harris. Now this trick, uh, obviously originally by Paul Harris but has been interpreted by loads of people uh, over the years and um, I've added one or two little things to it and I uh, just wanted to show you guys how it's done, how I do it and hopefully you can put it into your repertoire. It's great for table hopping because there is no reset for reset as uh, someone did ask me so um, I'll get into it now I'll show you the performance I'll show you uh, the ins and outs of psychology and the subtleties I put in um, so hopefully you too will be performing this great routine very soon let's get into it so let's uh, get into the handling of the trick also uh, I don't know if you know but this table and first cards uh, work as perfect black eye it just looks like a gold band on the table doesn't it <laughs> kind of cool um, so yeah, you take out your cards. Now I, I say I do this in a very um, casual way. You can get into this trick in a load of different ways. Um, some people will do all this kind of fancy producing of four aces. Um, others will produce the four kings and the four aces with uh, cardistry. However you want to get into it is up to you. I prefer just to uh, almost make it a, a conversational piece where I'm just saying, let me let me show you this really cool thing I do with blackjack. Um, and I go through, so it doesn't look too set up. Um, it sort of looks like you are just sort of going, oh, let me, let me show you something really cool. Um, the only other way I do perform it is if I've got uh, the shuffle lesson, you know, with uh, Ben L did a version of it, where you take half the deck, they take half the deck, they shuffle, they cut, they deal, they shuffle, cut and deal, and mix them all up. And then four piles end up with you have the four kings, they have the four aces. That's a lovely way to get into it because it's quite a natural thing to then collect the four kings, four aces and get into this. Um, so I don't do the big fancy productions, but nothing wrong with that. It's just a, 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 a preference. I prefer just to go through, um, take them out. And I've got them ready. Normally you just go through and find them, put the rest back in the box and then get on and explain this. Now the idea is to go with the kings and aces is that king and an ace make uh, blackjack as we know. So uh, you've got to be able to switch the kings and the aces in as you need them. Now there is a way of doing this with sleight of hand which is kind of cool. Um, you can take the king and you can place it in your hand so when you need it uh, you can get it. But in the meantime no one can see you've got it. I mean you can look and have it but until then uh, you keep it ready. So that's one move which works great if you're head on but if you've got angles and stuff it's not so good and with a casino there are people everywhere and there are cameras everywhere and you can't really get away with moves like that so um, what you need to do is misdirect everybody now when I say everybody I mean everybody and I'll tell you who they are in a casino in fact each of you will have a job in a casino to sort of uh, to show this so you will be sitting opposite me so you'll be the croupier you'll be the dealer of the cards uh, you guys around here you will be my opponents you'll be sitting around the table with me uh, you're quite tall so you'll be the eye in the sky that's the camera that looks down and checks everything out you'll be the manager you'll be the pit boss you're the one who throws me out if you catch me cheating um that's how many people you've got to distract uh so let me show you how to do it you've got to use misdirection uh but before we get started you're the croupier you must know the names of all these cards uh this one here's the king of very good diamonds. Uh, this one here is the king of spades. You're on fire. This one is hearts and don't say trees or you're thrown out of this club. Clubs, exactly. I gave you a clue. Uh, the point being, uh, the king's over here. Now, you've got to take the aces and uh, switch them for the kings, but without being seen. That's the key to this whole thing, without being seen. So, uh, the first days, I use misdirection like this. I put my hand up here and I... You look at my hand, right? Because it was clicking and that's when I snuck the first king from over there. You've got to really keep an eye on this. I'll, I'll do it again. Uh, this time if I show you the aces uh, here, you're not going to look away this time because you can see the aces. This won't work twice. So sometimes you can just do it right in front of someone. Now, that is a very cool way of doing it, but now people are really watching you close because you've got two cards left. Uh, there's no way they're going to let you get away with it. So you slap the waitress as she walks past and she gives you a slap in the face. As she hits you in the face, you sneak the first one out. While they're watching the first one, you sneak the second one out, giving you all four kings, which is what you wanted. But actually, maybe you've gone a bit too far because A, the pit boss saw you with aces and B, 40, four kings is not good for blackjack. So you can put them all back. Uh, that's one, two, three, four aces over here and the kings go right back to where they were. Now, some people think you've got more than eight cards, which is a shame, but you can prove you have. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you're going to play blackjack, I recommend you keep your cards in perfect 
blackjack winning, suit matching hands. And that is how I win a blackjack. All right, so now let's get into the um, ins and outs of this trick. And I wanna put it onto a slightly different angle for you so you can see uh, both sides of this. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. So you'll be able to see uh, the back angle and the front angle. I might even just zoom this in just a little bit so you can see the cards a bit better. Okay, so uh, what you're doing here essentially is um, showing four aces as four kings and then putting them back. And it is actually quite knuckle busting, but not the end of the world. Now, I've, there are two things I've added to this. Uh, one is the... Um, ability to do the false count without having to worry about rhythm now most false counts as you know are all about rhythm and it makes it very um a lot of people get very nervous about doing false counts because you have to do it in, in one two three four rhythm and and if you sort of hesitate or get a bit caught then there is no sort of room for error so i wanted to take that away i want to take that that nervousness away um, also, at the end, um, I think it was a Greg Wilson touch where you put them down in the king, ace, king, ace, king, ace, king uh, display at the end. And I've just come up with the order so that you they go down in suit matching cards. That was just a case of working backwards, but it's just a nice little touch. So the order you put these in, clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds with the king. So the diamonds on the face and the, uh, the aces go... Uh, diamonds, spades, clubs, hearts from back to front. So as you're looking at it, hearts, clubs, spades, diamonds. Okay. And you put these down. So as you get them out of the pack, uh, you can just explain this is how I cheat with cards. Um, and then I put them all together to show the eight cards. Now, I don't overly show them and, and all this stuff because it's quite nice if people think there are extra cards or double faces or something like inkling towards it. Because at the end, you can just give them the cards and it is all fair and square. So... You know, you show them as eight, but you don't overly do it. You know, don't don't run if you're not being chased. So we start with the uh, the talk about you can cheat using sleight of hand. Unfortunately, with that, um, it's it's not good with all the angles. Let me show you what I mean. Now, all I'm doing here is I take the card and I'm going to tenkai palm the card as I place it in my hand. Okay, so the card is just being tenkai like this. Okay, so the timing is here. Now you close your hand around it, which is daft. It makes no sense, but you open it up because uh, you wouldn't hold a card like this. So it's just a case of popping it here. Um, and I'll bring my hand down to rest on the edge of the table. Okay, so here, and you show, if you need it, you, you can bring it back. Now what I want to do here is I want to take the card with my fingers and pull it up out of this hand. So I come in at an angle so it looks like the card's coming out. It should show at the bottom, but because you're coming in at an angle like this and then coming up, it'll look like it's actually hiding in the hand. Okay, so you come up with your fingers like this and you come back down into Tenkai at an angle. So it just gives the impression that you're sort of putting it in and it's not coming out the bottom. You see what I mean? It's like, look, it goes in. So you do all this back here. So you go here. If you need it, you can get it back like this. And you see how it looks like it's higher than your hand doesn't make any sense and you come back in with the tenkai to to hide it again and then come up and then back like this so that's the the way of sort of showing the card as in your hand which is really nice um here here uh, and then you bring it out one more time and say but obviously hiding it there is great head on but if, often if you've got like 15 people watching you um it's not such a great move people kind of like that insight into the uh, magic world you know they, they kind of like the fact you're giving them a little secret even though you're not so you say um and it's quite nice as well being very blase about that move you go you know you, you can place it in your hand and hide it i mean when you need it it's there but but essentially uh, it's not a great move because people will see you do it and what's funny about that move is that nobody sees you do it which is really cool um, you say, but actually, there are better ways because you can fool lots of people. So immediately, you've got a nice, cool little bit of magic as you're explaining why you're doing this. Now, there is a false count that comes up here, and it's something that, when I first started doing this, it frightened the life out of me because I did you know, this whole kind of doing it in rhythm. 
so I thought and I thought and I thought and I, and I came up with this idea of giving everyone who's watching this trick, as in the actual people watching the trick, giving them each a job to do. Um, so I say, uh, you would be the croupier, I always do that first. So you're the croupier, you're sat opposite me, that's where you would be dealing the cards from. You guys around here, so there's people to your left and right, you say you would be my opponents in this game, uh, that's where you'd be sitting. So we, we are essentially playing against the croupier, and that does a little thing of sort of putting them on your side. Uh, you point to the tallest person, you'd be the eye in the sky, you get the beefiest person, you'd be the pit boss, you'd be the manager, um, you know, and, and so on and so on. I just give each, each person a job in a casino. Now, the reason you're doing this is so that when you do your count in a second, you're putting the heat onto them, not onto yourself. So here's the count. Um, you're going to get a break under the, th uh, the bottom card. Don't worry about making it tiny little break. I, did, I just hit the break uh, nice and nice and big there. So you get a break under the top card and you grab that with your thumb for a bit of grip and you say um, this one here you must know the names of all the cards so this one is the king of now what this this count normally looks like is this you go one two three four and it's just a little bit meh i don't know there's something about it i don't like so um i say it just fills me with with dread so what I do instead, and again, these are just in the order I showed you. You get a break under the bottom card, hold that with your thumb, and you say, this one here's the king of, and they say, diamonds, and you go, very good. Don't panic, it's not a, it's not a test. And in that time, all you're gonna do is you're gonna go back. Okay, so when you come back with the king, you go underneath and you line that card up with the card on the thumb break, and you're gonna pull both of those cards out under the king of spades, so this ace will be hidden this ace that you've stolen will be hidden under the king of spades and you keep a break under that card when it comes out don't worry about making it a tiny break it looks like you're just displaying the cards this one's the king of and often they'll sort of be a bit nervous and stutter the the suits out and you go spades and you go very good and then you just add the uh king of hearts on top and i use the line and the easy one because that is the easy uh move you just add in the king of hearts on hearts very good and then as i come back now I've got a break under two kings. I'm going to go underneath as I get the clubs. And I say, don't say trees or berries or you'll be thrown out of this club. Now, as I do that, I'm going to load those two kings on the bottom as I pull the top king off. No break required now. Okay, so you end up with uh, king, ace, king in this hand that you're displaying. And you've added the two kings to the back of uh, this packet giving you ace 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 king king should be hearts club spades hearts spades okay i'll go for that one more time and they 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 say clubs you say very good you turn this face down and put them on the box now the reason we use the box and we put the cards away is that you want to be able to pick these up nice and easy later when you don't want to be fumbling around on the on the table then splitting when you put them down so you put them on the box everything just stays nicely where it is um, i'll run through that false count again Remember clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds for the kings. All right, and uh, hearts, clubs, spades, diamonds for the aces. They go underneath. Get a thumb break. As you pull the top card off and say, this one is the king of diamonds. Very good. Add that king to the ace. Take both as you pull out the king of spades and say, this one is the king of spades very good you keep the break under here uh the easy one hearts of course and don't say tree now look as i do this don't say trees i come underneath my thumb here will take these under this packet as i take the king off so i'm gonna add those back to the bottom as i take the king off so that's actually covering up an ace so you gotta make sure it doesn't flash clubs exactly not trees not berries clubs very good and you put those on there Again, that leaves you with King, King, Ace, 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 and over here, King, Ace, King. You can watch that back if you need to, rather than me explaining that a thousand times. So what you do now is you've sort of taken away the idea of the rhythm, but made it more interactive with the audience by saying, you know, giving them the job, and when they get them all right, it will please with themselves, and all that sort of stuff. It just hides what you've got to do. Now, after you've done that, and you put these down, there's a, there's a very small offbeat where, again, this person is sort of, 
having a laugh with friends because they've just been told to uh, name all these cards. And on that offbeat, people are still watching, but it's not a watch really closely moment. I say, so what we need to do is take these aces. One, two, three, four. Now, I don't count four, but this is the four beats. You go one, two, three, four. Okay, you take one, two, and then you put the club back on for three, and the heart goes to the top of the deck. Four, okay? But you don't count four, it's just four beats. You go, the, the aces, and it's just a very subtle thing, but people are still kind of not reacting to that, but there's just a slight moment of um, of offbeat where you can just go, and the aces, what we need to do is switch those with the kings. Okay, so it's a nice little way of saying we've got four aces without actually counting them out. People see the four beats in their head um, just as they get in their attention back into the trick. So we've got to take the aces and switch them with the kings, one at a time. The first ace, now as you take the first ace up, you're gonna just push this over to get a break. It comes back down, you say, I use misdirection, which looks like this, and I do click out of nowhere, people look up, it just, and then you just do a double lift to show the king. Don't ever say what the suit is, because you're gonna show these twice. You just say, the first king, uh, I've got you with uh, misdirection, you're not gonna fall for that again, so I have to work double hard now. Now what you're gonna do here, we're gonna take the cards in a biddle grip, you're gonna slide the top one into your hand. You're then gonna turn your wrist this way. So not this way or anything. You're gonna come back on yourself to here, peel this ace off without flashing this king, okay? So you got, to, I normally do this trick standing up for this reason. So you here, you turn around, you peel this one off. This leaves you with a double, okay? This will be the ace and the king of hearts. Okay, so you round here, you peel that ace off. You then turn this round and place it here. All right, so that looks like, uh, <laughs> that looks like this. So you go one, two, three, four. And you can move this up to show the club. And you say now, obviously with the two aces, uh, people are looking, so I can't do this again. So I've got to do it right in front of you. Now with the king behind this ace, all you're gonna do is push down and then pull back up using the face of the card and then and that'll leave the king behind, all right? So it looks like this, you say, you can do it real fast if you like, like this, or you can do it nice and slow, depending on your style, um, just down and back up. It's a lovely change. Um, then you take this off and you're gonna just buckle these cards. Now when I say buckle, you're gonna just pull down on that bottom card, buckle in that card, which will be able to give you a chance to get your break under that card. So as you take this off, it just looks like that. Okay, so that's the second king, which you take, you flip, and you place down. So apparently you've got two aces left, when in fact this one's a double, and both kings. Um, the ace of spades here, so you hold these like two single cards, and that's two kings on the table, by all accounts. So you've changed two aces into two kings. Now as you put this ace back on top, you're gonna buckle again and lift it straight back off. Okay, so um, you're adding this king onto the bottom of this ace. So you just say, uh, the next one, you're watching me really closely now. So I basically put them all on and then buckle the bottom card off. So I'm just adding that king to the back of the ace. So you say that we don't wanna do is this, is, is add it on like this. You need to put it on flat and then buckle the bottom one off. Yeah. So uh, you put that one down, you show the ace here. This time I'm gonna be watched really closely because um, of the first two. So what I do is I create a diversion. I slap the waitress on her butt as she walks past. She turns around and slaps me in the face. Now as I say slaps me in the face, I do the shapeshifter change. Okay, she slaps me in the face. You place that card down, push the king off, turn it face down and put it underneath this king in jogged so you can then grip everything and turn it all around and say while you're watching that king I stole the fourth king out as well okay so that's now uh, all four kings you push this up you take this end and you turn it around and you place these on and you say but if I have four kings here there's two problems one you saw me with aces so the pit boss is going to throw me out unless I've got aces and two four kings is 40 it it busts 
So the way to remedy that, and as you click, you just pop like this. Yeah, so, and what this does, and you can turn these over now, and you're ready to do an Elmsley count. Now an Elmsley count is done in several ways. A lot of people started with uh, pulling this card off like this. Um, I I just get a break under the, under the uh, first ace. You can even do this and show uh, one, two, and then get into the Elmsley count. But uh, the point being, an Elmsley count, very quickly, um, is you take the top card off. You then do what's called a block push off. So if you push these forward, everything above the bottom card will go off as a block. So you go one, as you come back, you're gonna put this card to the back and leave it there. As you take this whole block off, that's two, then three, then four. Now this one does uh, require a rhythm, uh, which is fine, which order are these in? Ooh, it's got a bit of the ace here, isn't it? Yeah. So this has got to have a rhythm. So you have to practice this. Uh, one, two, three, four, okay? Uh, there's no way around that. Um, there is, you can do it at the fingertips as well. One, oh, excuse me. You can do it at the fingertips, I promise. One, two, three, four. Um, it's not a, the most natural way of doing it and most people uh, shy away from that. And you can also kick this one up so you can grab those uh, to do the move. So there are, there are several ways around it, loads of work on it. Um, so look it up. I say, I'll just get a break under there, just do the count. Now, when you've got all four aces, you can reach over here, the other hand, and say the kings go right back to where they were. Now, these won't know that they've seen the king of hearts and the king of spades twice. So this will look like the king they've just seen here. It's a lovely moment. Um, and you hold these packets nice and fair. You can do this. I don't see the point really of showing another king. You just say the kings go right back to where they were. And now the kings go underneath, so they're on top of the deck. So you put these underneath, square everything up, turn it over, and you say, but some people think I've got more than eight cards. So I'll prove I've got one, two, okay, two into the hand, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this is, I uh, say, Greg Wilson, I don't know if it's his idea, but I learned it from him on one of his uh, videos back in the day. But because of the order we used at the beginning, we now have uh, King and Ace of Diamonds, King and Ace of Clubs, King and Ace of Spades, King and Ace of Hearts. Now often when I do this, I say, the best way to win is to keep the cards in perfect, suit matching, blackjack winning hands. And it's a very nice, uh, display at the end and the sort of beats as you turn them over. Um, I hate applause cues, but it's one of those when you put them down, you, you do get a nice reaction from it. Um, don't ever do this and wait for an applause. You look like a bell end. Just um, if they like it enough to applaud, they will. Um, but this is a really, really nice trick. I hope you guys uh, get something from it. Um, I don't want to go over it too much and make it boring because it's already like 20 odd minutes. Um, but if you don't, if you if there's something that I've not explained right, let me know and I'll do another video. Hopefully you can see from this and a few sort of rewinds of the video, you'll get all the moves. Uh, leave a comment below if you like the trick, if you do a different version of it. Um, yeah, just let, let me know in the comments below what you think and if you'd like to see a few more tutorials from me in the future. Uh, guys, thank you again for being very patient with the channel. It will be up and running again very shortly. Uh, big love and peace out.